Hello, I'm Ruth Allen, Chief Executive of Baswa, and welcome to my blog this week. Today I am delighted to be joined by Julia Ross. Hello, Julia. Hello, Ruth. Good to be here. Hi. Julia, who's been a Baswa member since uh, 1972, I think, and is now on Baswa Council, um, is a, describes herself as a generic social worker um, yeah. and started uh, her career back in the early 70s after an initial career in nursing. Um, has worked in London, has worked in Scotland, um, has worked in management and also some really senior roles as a, a director of social services and, and in primary care and integrated care and for the Department of Health. And for the last eight years has been working very much in uh, the digital world. So we'll be hearing about all of that. So really pleased you're here with us uh, today, Julia. Um, the particular reason for the session uh, today uh, is that it's the first in a series of vlogs I'm going to be doing over the next month, exploring our history um, as a profession um, and our history as Baswa, our present and future as part of Baswa's 50th birthday celebrations uh, in June. Do sign up to our birthday festival online. Uh, there are sessions on the 22nd and 23rd of June and we are fundraising uh, for three charities, the Social Workers Benevolent Trust, Child Poverty Action Group, and ATD Fourth World, which is a service user rights uh, uh, organisation in the UK and internationally. Today, uh, the 29th of May, um, is also a related birthday. It's 50 years since the enactment of the Local Authority Social Services in England and Wales. This is still in force, although amended in England, um, but uh, there's now devolved legislation in Wales. And we will explore the different laws there and in Scotland and Northern Ireland in, in, another, in another blog. That legislation in England and Wales in 1970 created unified social services departments for the first time, integrating various local government welfare services and created a central role for generic social workers, a unified profession created out of the disparate strands of specialist social work that had uh, gone before. Um, and with this came the consolidation of professional training, one, uh, one unified training uh, approach. The legislation unified, that unified social work um, was based on the 1968 Seabone report, which had recommended the creation of community-based and family-oriented services available to all and that the new department will, the quoting from the report now, reach beyond the discovery and rescue of social casualties and enable the greatest possible number of individuals to act reciprocally, giving and receiving services for the well-being of the community. So it had a real community and empowerment focus. Mm -hmm. It actually sounds very modern today, really. The bank was created shortly after the Act um, to represent the unified profession through the coming together of the uh, seven uh, or eight uh, representative bodies of social work, which was the Association of Social Workers, Family Case Workers, Moral Welfare Workers, which as a title dates it to, to its time, the Association of Child Care Officers, Mental Welfare Officers, Psychiatric Social Workers, Medical Social Workers, the one that didn't join together to form Baswa was NAPO, the National Association of Probation Officers, which I think is interesting considering what's happened to probation, particularly in England um, since then. So the new generic social work of the, um, that was created in 1970 was to be focused on holistic work with families and individuals of all ages within communities and was really set up also in contrast with the health service to some extent. Um, and in part, it was as a means of overseeing and being a rights-based check and balance to some of the institutionalising and controlling elements of parts um, of the health service. So rather than being focused on diagnosis, deficits and institutions, the new social work and the new social work departments were intended to focus on citizenship, rights, communities, prevention, working early with families, working holistically. And those concepts sound really modern and also really important now. And they're absolutely things that we're wrestling with now. A huge amount has happened since then. But um, with, with that as a very, very quick synopsis and backdrop, Julia, I'd like to come to you um, and start by asking you um, how you came into social work in the early 70s, um, into this context, and, and, uh, and what was it like? <laughs> 
Thank you, Ruth. It was a really exciting time, but I didn't realise quite how exciting when I first joined because I trained as a nurse at St Thomas's in London. And after three years, after qualifying, fourth year maybe, I began to feel I wasn't doing what I wanted to be doing. I'm just going to give you a very small, short story of somebody I was working with at the time that really stuck in my memory as to, to why I wanted to change, if, if you can bear with me. So I'll call her Maggie. It's not her real name. But Maggie came in um, to one of the women's wards at St. Thomas's. She came from Lambeth uh, with a really nasty abscess. I won't describe it. Um, but a really nasty abscess. And uh, we drained the abscess and we gave her antibiotics and we rested her. I thought she was in her 40s. Her, her mum came in with three children. Um, they were all quite young children, all under five. And clearly mum was looking after them. Granny was looking after them. And then she went away again. And we discharged Maggie. Fine. Uh, three weeks later, she was back in again. Same abscess, same place. And exactly the same problems. But this time... Um, granny didn't come in with the children. I asked what had happened to them because um, it, it seemed odd. Uh, remember at that time I was a nurse, not a social worker, and uh, she said no they'd gone into care because her mum couldn't cope. And I was so shocked, one that we didn't know and two that we'd sent her back into a situation where she, her health deteriorated again and then her family broke down. And it, it just stuck with me. And I thought, oh, Maggie, Maggie was actually in her 20s. So she was um, in a really difficult situation. That is in part um, what disillusioned me about, I mean, nursing is a wonderful profession. It's wonderful, but it can't achieve everything. Uh, and social work does that other bit, um, which is about working with whole people, whole families that, that drove me into then retrain um, in, in social work and then joined London Borough of Hammersmith and Fulham in 1972 when Peter Westland was the chief exec. It was all a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, but the, the issues are current, aren't they? And that in the way in which social work relates and to other professions as well is, is also yes. captured in that story and our role, perhaps. Um, yeah. but one, of the, one of the key... Um, aims, I think, of, of the legislation and of the creation of social services was to have social services and social workers working generically, which I think would be interested in your comments on that aspect, but also really working in and with communities. I mean, that was quite a lot of the... Yes, yeah. Tension, wasn't it? That, that was the drive. That was what Seaburn was all about. And that was what made it really so exciting. So we, when I joined um, Hammersmith and Fulham, it was a brilliant place to work. Um, I joined as an unqualified social worker and then they sent me away on training. They also um, gave me an extra year of a day a week release to train at the Tavistock. It wasn't the Tavistock then, it was the Institute of Family and Group Analysis. And I learnt family therapy and group working, which was a wonderful opportunity. But the bit you're describing about communities was so, so important. So I arrived in Hammersmith and Fulham um, you know, it was like coming to the moon. There were two very different departments. There was child, largely children and families, and they were largely qualified social workers. And then there was the welfare, and they were largely unqualified. And then there was mental health, and there were PSWs. Uh, of course, they were psychiatric social workers. And I was supervised by a PSW, which was brilliant. Um, she used to give me... Um, when I was in training, she used to give me casework, and then she used to make me do um, the the continuous recording um, and that took forever but I learned so much from it. So what then happened was that we created in Hammersmith and Fulham intake teams across the board, community-based intake teams that did short-term work. Now I brought a book with me that I read a lot about short-term work. This is um, Brief and Extended Casework by Reed and Shine. It was one of my Bibles. Uh, one of my other Bibles was Noel Tins and he described that very quick, short, sharp interventions. And that was how we refocused ourselves because we worked together as an intake team with our different specialities. We allocated cases as they came along and then we went out into the community and we used each other. But the joyous thing about the community then was that there was such a strong network of voluntary organizations. So there was the local Salvation Army, um, there was a whole range of voluntary organizations that did some of those practical things uh, that as social workers, we didn't do then, but we, we learned together and we worked together as a team. Uh, and that was a, that was a really, really good feeling. So it was a really good time to join. 
you, we were just talking earlier, Julia, about a bit about your identity as a social worker. You said you really do identify as a, as a generic social worker. And of mm -hmm. course, since since that time, we've this profession um, in England in particular has come a very long way from that notion of, of genericism. Um, although I think, you know, as, as well, we, we absolutely see it as a unified profession. We have largely unified training still across the UK. Mm -hmm. um, so I just wondered about your thoughts on, you know, identifying as a generic social worker and your thoughts on some of the specialisation that's happened um, in, in, more recent, you know, in more recent times. Yes, um, I'm, I'm sorry that some of the changes happened and I don't think they were intentional in terms of moving away from what social work is so good at because the basic values and philosophy are still very much there and they're shared. Um, I do, I'm going to go sideways for a minute, if that's okay with you. A um, bit of a red herring, but it's about working in an integrated health and social care way. Because for me, that was what was important, that I saw people as whole people. I saw systems as whole systems, always have done, always will do. And yet somehow, post sebum, what we've done is lose that. And we've created these separate individual, much more individual departments. I was in Barkey and Dagenham, I was Director of Social Services there and Chief Exec of PCT, one of the first in the country doing it jointly, when uh, Margaret Hodge was Minister for Children. And she made that decision, very big decision, to take children's social work out of um, social care and put it in with education. But that happened in most parts of the country. Um, I thought that that might be really exciting because then families could all go through you know one place together to try and get their, their help etc but it never really worked out like that and what it did in effect I think was to separate the professions out so uh, it that wasn't intentional it wasn't the intention at all uh, but I think that's probably I think we need to work together to resolve that so that we don't have these separations within families as they age and as things change um, I, I, did, I did begin as a generic social worker, but I was also one of the first child protection social workers in, in the country. And that, that was a, a really big learning because I couldn't do that on my own. I couldn't do, I was a career grade child protection worker and served on the Select Committee on Violence in the Family as an advisor for a while. Um, that was, that was a, a, again, a wonderful opportunity, but, but I didn't really feel that I was working just with the children and families that needed protecting. I still felt I was working with the whole family and that's the way that I treated it because grandparents, aunts and uncles and other members of the family have their problems too that contribute to what's happening to the children and also contribute to the ways children can be supported, helped, nurtured within, a, within an extended family. So I, I think some of these divisions are really quite quite false, not, they're not real, they're not real to me and I don't think they are to families either. So why would you need to see a social worker, different social worker, because your, your granny needs to go into a home? I, I, I don't know, why, why would that make sense? Um, but it's the bit about joining up with health, I think is really, really important too. And I won't go on about it too much, but um, when I began, I always worked with health visitor, when I worked in hospital social work, I always worked with the um, health visitors in the area teams to make sure that children could be returned to their families, etc. Uh, and I think that happens now, but the divisions between the professions seem to have grown larger. And I, I'm not sure I understand why that's happened at all. It's 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 to do. I think no, no. You you say because you've obviously got something to say. Tell me what you think. <laughs> no, I was just I was thinking um, that. Um... Yes, it's interesting. I think in some ways, uh, some bits have got, got closer to health, and some bits we, it, we're still, we still have the same issues that we've always had around, um, around a, you know, the dis distinction between different professions and how social work works with other professions. And, and, that, and that seems um, really key. But I was just wondering also about, um, you know, you've had a role as a director of social services, um, and also director of the primary care trust at the same time, it was a joint, a joint role, CEO of the CCP. Um, and I was wondering what you think the challenges are for senior leaders to support social work that can be um, more holistic and to be more um, to, to, to overcome some of the um, barriers, boundaries that you said you feel have been falsely put in place um, and create whole services, given how 
service structures and are, are now set up. Um, you know, how what's that like really if you're if you're a director or a, a manager um, trying to to create you know holistic services for for families and, and, and individuals in communities now? Do you think? Mm. I think it's all about relationships. Uh, I, I think because uh, I think in some areas of the country it's really been achieved very well, and it's to do with how leaders um, but you get leaders at the top but you get leaders at the front line too so if you have a community of gps and social workers who value each other um, and have relationships then it happens because they know it's important because both of them um, both the health professions and the social work professions are putting the whoever whether they call the person or the family a patient or a client or a service user or an expert um whatever um it, it's that they are the ones that that so it's about that single accountability to one person or, or one family from both the professions or all the professions so i think it works incredibly well in some areas despite the structures and despite sometimes despite the senior leadership but usually because of it as well because that leadership has to be professionally led um, and sometimes we forget that uh, so I mean I'm very very pleased to be with Basra at the moment and I see Basra moving from strength to strength and I think if we can forge that leadership um, of, of social work through PSWs no longer psychiatric social workers um, but through PSWs and through um, leaders at all levels and I think I think there's a huge I can't, there's potentially a much huger understanding by the health professions of how we can do that, how we both contribute to the improving lives and improving well-being. And advocating the role of social workers um, with, with our partners uh, within health or with, within education is obviously a really crucial issue. It's mm. always a crucial issue. And I think obviously Baz has got a, a really um, important part to play in that. Um, and I was also interested there, because I think what you were describing really was that move to um, you know, personalisation fact that yeah. you know professionals are there in the service of the needs of um, and the wishes um, and the motivations um, and the, you know, the desires of people who want to get on and live their lives with support and who have the right to have that support um, and of course you worked um, for some time for the Department of Health leading the care services and partnership which had um, that would have a lot of personalization Kind of at the heart of its intention and again we've had some discussions about your your um your views and and passion really around the, the move towards more um pers you know towards personalization and is there anything you want to say about you know, that that shift over the over the years in, in social work yeah the csip the care services improvement partnership was led by richard humphreys uh, a former colleague of mine um who's now with the king's fund um excellent uh, four or five years I ran the social care program and as part of that we had things like, um, not things, but projects on personalization and a huge work stream on personal budgets. Now, I, that was led by Martin Routledge. That's such a wonderful opportunity to do things differently because it was about personalizing um, what people could do, their choice, etc. co-producing with, with um, but it hasn't worked as well as it could have. Um, and I think, I think we can really readily rescue that, um, particularly if we look again at how uh, the whole issue about, um, I've forgotten the word for it, how awful, um, social prescribing, sorry, social prescribing, because that's what social prescribing is, um, forgive me for living. But part of the problem is that's been um, taken on by health and somehow social work doesn't see it its, its own anymore and yet it was a natural progression from using personal budgets. So I think that's, I'd like to see that happening in the future. I'd like to see health budgets become health and um, social care budgets and that would be a wonderful way of solving some of those problems about funding and continuing uh, care etc. Um, but also some of the mental health because actually the personal budgets worked really well for people with a learning disability and people with mental health issues problems whatever um and less well for older people so i think that's an, that's a missed opportunity that we could probably recover which would be good to see wouldn't it yeah absolutely um and i guess at the heart of the idea of personal budgets and direct payments has been about choice and control that's that's the, you know however however yeah. the money goes around and whatever the transactions are the key thing is can people 
um, control and choose and have the support that they they need and want in ways that they um, that they want it and that's really crucial it's interesting the point you made there about older people um, and of course I mean we're at the moment we are dealing with COVID situation we're dealing with that, that um, really vast numbers of, of, our, of older generations have been exposed uh, and not protected from the virus in care homes um, and care homes you know there's a place for care homes in certain ways but it really this situation in an awful way has really shone a light on how do we provide pers you know, personalized support to older people um, that is that is safe um, and that is, um, you know, humane and, 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 you know, really about them as people. And I think, I think that's, a, that's a narrative that's going to come out in the current situation and will be informing those of us who, you know, our, our profession and others who care about the, the quality of care. Um, I'm just conscious of time and, and wanting, um, we could go on for a very long time in this conversation, but I did want to get to um, your, your interest also in digital um, the digital futures um, and, and digital present of social work. And I know that you've been doing lots in that area. Um, do you want to say just a bit about about how you how you see that fitting into you know the story of social work or your story your story of social work as it as it as it is uh, uh, sort of nearly fifty years? I, of course, um, you're you're aware that uh, the Baswa took part in leading part in the digitalization of social work. And I think that is the first step in a huge, huge um, new movement. So I worked for eight years on data analytics, um, creating uh, what I think is the right way forward, which is integrated care pathways um, for whole groups of people, cohorts of families and children, um, looking at older people, looking at how they go into hospital, what the costs are, what the activity is, what the pathways are of getting there. But what, what Baswa probably should do, I and mean, one of the things we could do better, is make better use of data, make better use of an evidence base. Um, we're good at using an evidence base, but we tend not to lock into thinking about it as reading the data. And that's something that I'm sure um, Baswa will help lead on in future, and it's really, really going to be important. I'll never forget what one of the, the um, service users or experts um, in the digitalization group said it was a young man of 16 he's got my his name um but he was wonderful because he said no 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 no, no. You, you mustn't talk in this way about sending me emails i have a digital self this is me you must relate to my digital self and we we ignore that at our peril i think so julia thank you um i'm going to draw it to a close there that was really fascinating and uh, it was great to move through so many different stages really of social work of your career um, and um, to also reflect on I think some of those really important messages that were there in in, in what was an, an idealism in the early 70s I think mm -hmm. uh, but the mm -hmm. ideas were very powerful um, they were very important um, and I think some of them do do um, they come through into our same preoccupations around rights choice welfare holistic approaches family and community as well as individuals um, and also some thoughts there about um, the, the current and the future priorities for social workers in practice, how we practice and uh, yeah our, our digital selves as we are evidencing right now um, is really uh, is, is important and uh, we've been learning a lot during these last uh, couple of months actually um, about how to accelerate some of our learning around that. I guess we're also learning what we're missing in terms of not being able to be in the same rooms as each other which is also fundamental to social work and the, the human uh, you know the celebration of the human spirit and of, uh, of human relations um in, in 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 real life as it were um so thank you so much and thank you for your support for baswa um and uh great to have you on council at the moment and great that you could join me today um, and so I'll be doing uh, more of these um, over the coming weeks, celebrating different, exploring different aspects of 50 years of social work in Basel. So thank you very much and bye-bye. Uh, bye-bye, Julia. Goodbye. Thank you bye. very much for that opportunity. Bye. bye. <laughs>